Hello everyone, this is the final bossman and today I'm going to be positive! Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman and uh, here we are in Beverly Hills, California! Uh, what's going to change about the show? Uh, not too much. I don't have a Naughty Dog mug here anymore. Um, we're in front of some NASA stuff. I got a big metal desk. Uh, it's weirder. It's weirder finding lunch. I mean, there's a lot of restaurants nearby, but they're all Beverly Hills restaurants. Like they're just for Ari Gold and Vincent Chase. And so, like yesterday, I was walking for like 25 minutes just trying to find a Subway or a Quiznos, and like eventually, I found a Baja Fresh, and I ate at Baja Fresh. So other than that, shows pretty much give me the same. Uh, just to reiterate, the final boss one is a show about my opinions, which are not grounded by any expertise and are frequently proven to be wrong, uh, but that's what the show is. And uh, basically, I was working on this episode about the, the recent announcement that the Pokemon trading card game would be coming to iPads, and that there were articles about, hey, this is a big deal for Nintendo. It's like, it's not even Nintendo, and I wanted to talk, like, that game, if you've played it, exists right now on PC, and it is gutter trash, but I was getting very worked up. And then you see the news, and it's like, what am I, what is going on? It, it, Things are happening in the United States that are that are horrible, and, and 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 it just like you look at right back at your little laptop, and you're like, what am I like, what am I getting so worked up about? This is so insignificant. I, I mean, every episode is insignif insignificant, but this one felt especially so. Uh, so I want to be positive today. I don't I don't want to be making fun of Nintendo today. I want to be making good things, making happy at Nintendo, if that's a phrase. Uh, so this week. Five reasons why video games are better today than they were one year ago. If you can think back to August of 2013. Uh, number one, Nintendo isn't doing as bad. So Wii U sales are, are picking up. They're still not great, but they're picking up. And this system in the course of one year has gone from something that you couldn't really recommend to your friends to something we can all recommend. At this point last year, there wasn't even Mario 3D World. Wii U has had a pretty good year. For Nintendo as a business, it's gone from, oh, we should abandon this as soon as possible, to, hey, I think we're gonna make it through this. We'll get them next time. In 12 months, not bad. Number two, Phil Spencer is head of Xbox. So at this point last year, there was no head of Xbox. I did this whole like dumb thing on the show even, where it was the, I characterized each of the console manufacturers as bands, dueling bands. And uh, one of the points of it was, uh, if there were any, uh, is that, Microsoft was hard to characterize at that point. We saw a lot of recurring faces, but none of them were strong personalities necessarily. And there was no one really to latch on to with that company. Uh, today, we have Phil Spencer as head of Xbox, and he's great at that. You know, he's doing interviews, and he's being candid, and he's on Twitter, and he's a person you can attach to that business. And I know this isn't pragmatic thinking, but I think that Phil Spencer, as a human, makes the Xbox One a more likable product. And I think that's just how dumb human brains work. But, uh, good hire. Number three, next gen is current gen. Uh, one year ago, we did not know how well the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One would sell. You know, that was a huge mystery and there was just a lot of just, I don't see people spending this many hundreds of dollars on a gaming dedicated machine. Frankly, I think this might be the last console generation. My Android tablet plays games with graphics that are just as good. And I can use my fingers. It didn't, the PlayStation 4 sold so well. We bought so many of those gaming dedicated machines. The, the PlayStation 4, in fact, sold so well that I think it's single-handedly assured that there will be a PlayStation 5. And I can single-handedly assure that that is a good thing for video games. Number four, streaming is easier and more popular than ever. So as we race forward on this bullet train to the singularity, things like live streaming make me feel like it's not all gonna be that bad. Uh, I, I like live streaming. I didn't used to, but I'm, I'm into it now. In fact, last week I had to be, because of Gamescom and the, the live streams of Gamescom, which happens in Germany and the other side of this planet, uh, I had to be at work at 4.30 a.m. And instead of like going home and sleeping for a little bit and then driving back to work in time for 4.30 a.m., I decided to stay at work and live stream video games all night. And uh, to my coworkers, I was like, oh, pff, yeah, it's gonna suck, dude. I don't like, 
Oh man, I just can't believe I'm doing this. It's so stupid. But uh, in reality, like, I was really excited to do it. I wanted to do that. And uh, I liked it. I had fun. I had fun hanging out with a hundred other weirdos for seven and a half hours. Uh, even if you have five people watching your live stream, there's still other weirdos that are watching you play video games. You're still making some bizarre connection through the internet and, and it's hard to describe. I think it's very important. I think much like Xbox Live changed the games that we play and the way we play them last generation, I think live streaming is going to change this generation more than anything. Well, probably, probably VR first. So it's probably gonna be VR then live streaming, then the final boss man. Number five, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. Ooh -hee! So that's the whole list. Uh, before we go, I do want to give you a fun update on a prior episode. Uh, over the break, I did a poorly received episode about how poorly regulated the Wii U eShop is. Uh, one of the games we showcased was called Frederick. Resurrection of Music, um, very racist, uh, great music, rated E, ages 10 and up, uh, had this guy blow weed smoke in your face, uh, and gave us this wonderful clip. Oh god damn it, Chopin! Today I was checking up on Frederick, and it turns out he is not rated T for teen. For drug use and suggestive themes. How about that? I think, uh, the universe is right again. No child will play Frederick thinking, oh, this is not... This is gonna be for me, um, this is cool. The child will see T for teen, I gotta play Frederick, right? We, we helped him out a little bit. It seems like a more appealing game if it's teen. If it's E, it's like, what, it's just Chopin playing some piano? I don't care. T, you're like, what is the suggestive themes? I like to think this show is rated T for teen. Because uh, most of the time I keep it clean, but uh, you never know when one of my themes might be suggestive, if you know what I mean. That's the show for this week. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. If you didn't like the music I picked out this week, let me know, because <laughs> I'm not sold on any of it either. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and I will be back here next Wednesday. This is our new home. Right? <laughs> I hope to see you next week. Thanks for watching. You can't call this your office. Why not? Because you share it with Bloodworth. Uh, he's my assistant. No, he isn't. <sighs> well, I watched a few episodes of The Final Bossman and have some notes. I think you should take a look. Why are you giving me notes? Well, because I'm your boss. Brandon! What? Damiani thinks he's my boss because you gave him an office. What? <laughs> that can't be right. No, Damiani's nobody's boss. Thank you. Your boss is Huber. What? Welcome to Beverly Hills, bossman. That's how we do it at Defy. Hey, Brandon. Can I stay here for a while? <laughs>